Welcome to today's Q master class on technical indicators and chart templates, part three. I am Sagarnandi, you already have my detail. Let's go to the next slide. Disclaimer, I am not an investment advisor. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is not a trade recommendation. Trading involves risk. You and only you are solely responsible for the outcome of your trades. In Q master classes, we are covering all the Q systems and the underlying component, underlying platforms one by one. Today we will cover for the third day technical indicators and technical charts in Q Elite and Q Global. Q Elite runs on Trade Station. Q Global runs on Metastock. We started with technical indicators in earlier sessions. I mentioned they are grouped under different categories. We have already covered candle, then volume or activity, trend category of indicator, that is the direction lines, support resistance category of indicators, that is memory and watermark. Both of them are also zero lag indicators. We covered up to this in the part one video. In part two, we covered range indicators, channel and boundary, pivot category of indicators, these are horizontal support and resistance levels. In daily chart for quarterly yearly pivots and also intraday pivots in fine tune chart. Then we continue to the momentum indicators, traffic light for daily interval flow, a special case of traffic light and backdrop for weekly interval. Once momentum moves price up or down, the stock becomes extended. We cover two extension indicators, pendulum or price extreme and jump and thrust. I mentioned that jump and thrust is not only extension indicator, it has an element of intensity associated with it. It is also extension indicator because it is longer term. Then we have two intensity indicators, shorter term. They are very useful for swing trading, pressure and U-turn, and then big move. For short term overbought, oversold indicator, we covered stretch and once stretch is released, that is one kind of reversal indicator, stretch release. We covered up to this in the part two video. Today we'll cover rest of the reversal category indicators, a number of volatility indicators, relative performance, and finally stop level decision indicator that is protection. And after that, I would like to go through the chart templates. Let's begin. Continuing with reversal indicators, indecision indicator. Strictly speaking, it is not a reversal signal, but it is a precursor to it. And whenever we see this qualification precursor, it is actually very useful because we get advanced alert that a reversal may be happening. Let's go through the detail of the indecision signal. It combines multiple technical formations. One is indecision shape candle, including but not limited to a doji candle. Doesn't have to be a doji candle. So it is broader than just using doji for indecision. And it has to appear either at a swing low or swing high. These two characteristics together often becomes a precursor to a reversal. 
an indecision shaped candle in itself may not provide ample signal for making trading decisions. However, Q indecision that comes at swing extreme, swing extreme indecision, those are often a precursor to a reversal. Hence, Q indecision is called bullish indecision when it appears at a swing low and bearish indecision when it shows up at a swing high. You will often find indecision prior to stretch release and or Q reversal prior to often you will find that. One Q indecision is useful enough. We may make trading decisions based on only one Q indecision. However, often a cluster will come together. They are even more significant. You will often find cluster of them prior to a recovery up at swing low or pull back down at swing high. It is plotted as a dot on the candle in entry, daily and intraday entry charts and backdrop weekly chart template. Bullish is gold, bearish is orange. The bullish indecision will come below the candle, bearish indecision will come above the candle. Let's look at some examples. I will read the annotations by number. Number one, here, cluster of indecision at the top. Look for a Q short setup. We'll take a shot with appropriate trade setup, not just looking at indecision, but we'll get ready to take a short setup if we see one or in this case, a cluster of indecision signals. Number two, another indecision, not only Q indecision, in this case, it was a doji candle as well. This day triggered a box short setup. And if you check the stock on this day, the flow had also turned bearish on that day and price fell with bearish pressure. So you could confidently take a short trade on this day because we already got alert from cluster of indecision. Price came down, tried to retest that same level. Another indecision followed by a bearish stretch release as well as bearish flow and it gave a box short setup. What stock it is? It is actually IBD 50, FFTY ETF. So we could take a box short setup in FFTY on this day. Indecisions helped us prepare in advance for the shot. Then point number three, indecision itself, in this case, bullish indecision coming after a drop, two of them, indecision itself is not a buy signal. It is a signal to look for a Q trade setup. And in this case, no Q buy setup materialized. There was no watermark I can see in the visible chart portion and it didn't confirm any Q long trade setup. So we could get ready, but there was no trade setup like bounce or box or hit. And certainly go with flow would not be possible because it was in a downtrend. So we can get ready, but we will not take the trade unless we get confirmed Q trade setup like we got at point two. The number four, cluster of indecision. Again, a cluster, not one. One is enough, but we can see often a cluster of them come together. Cluster of bullish indecision at the bottom. Look for a buy setup. On this day, number five, we had a bullish headwind signal. However, that candle had an upper tail. So the 
headwind long trade setup was not confirmed. So it continued to track the stock. Point number six, on this day, we had bullish flow and that was the first go with flow long trade setup. So we would confidently take a long trade on this day. And we would be ready well in advance from this day itself. If you watch the stock regularly, you could try to enter it in this area, but that would be using intraday fine tune chart for fast trades. And then on this day, you will confidently take a long trade using the go with flow long trade setup. And that would be the first trend following long setup after this long drop. And since then, FFTY nicely went up. That was indecision signal. Let's see what is the next signal. Reversal signal. Q reversal is a reversal signal. Here reversal means a candle reversal. Bearish reversal means high above previous high and then close below previous low. Not low, but close. So we try to go above previous day's high and close to below previous day's low. And bullish reversal, low below previous day's low, and they close above previous high. So this is a down candle, let's say, and a bullish reversal will be something like this. And if this is an up candle, bearish reversal will be something like this. Two candle pattern. Q reversal. Reversal may be used in a trading decision. Bounce or box setup with Q reversal is even more effective. We don't need a Q reversal for box or bounce setup, but if we have this pattern along with the checklist conditions, then it is even more effective. Why? Because when it was trying to go down, it probably lured short traders or stopped out weak hands and immediately reversed. So it will have additional momentum to the up direction because the short traders would have to cover. And the same thing in opposite direction is true for bearish reversal. When it tried to go up, it lured buyers and it immediately reversed. So the buyers will have to bail out, especially the weaker hands and that will add to the bearish momentum. Reversal happening at pendulum extreme is a signal to be ready for a trade. Look for a buy setup is reversal is at pendulum low and look for a short setup is reversal is at pendulum high. So here, of course, reversal at pendulum high means it is bearish reversal and bullish reversal at pendulum low. It should be qualified bullish reversal at pendulum low and bearish reversal at pendulum high. On the other hand, if bullish reversal is at pendulum high, you may wait. Don't take a trade immediately. Wait for a swing low to buy. Bullish reversal at pendulum high may happen in very strong stocks. If so, wait for a pullback. So down move immediately followed by a bullish reversal. If this is happening at pendulum high, don't chase the stock, wait for a pullback and for the stock to go up again. And the opposite is true for bearish trades. If a bearish reversal is at pendulum low, wait for a swing high to short. In general, to have higher reward risk ratio, you may focus only on bullish reversal at pendulum low and bearish reversal at pendulum high. You are able to combine the Q scans or explorers in a waterfall model to identify bullish or bearish reversals at pendulum low and high respectively.
reversal with heavy activity or pressure U-turn is even more significant. The reversal itself is talking about price move. And if we have either heavy activity or pressure U-turn, then we are also adding volume component to the reversal. Therefore, it is even more significant. So we can add to the signals one by one to make them more significant as a whole. First, we have a reversal. Then we see, is it happening at pendulum extreme? Then we see, do we have heavy activity or pressure? All these signals adding more and more forces in the direction of our train. Reversal is plotted as a band indicator and it is grouped with pendulum extreme because we like to find reversal set pendulum high or low. Bullish reversal green, bearish reversal red. Example. Q entry daily chart. Here we have pendulum level high, and then we get a bullish reversal at pendulum high. That can happen. Often happens in strong stocks. And I mentioned that don't chase the stock if we have bullish reversal at pendulum high. Instead of buying at bullish reversal at pendulum high, you may wait for a swing low entry point that may follow. In both cases, one and two, so here we have a bullish reversal at pendulum high and once again a bullish reversal at pendulum high. We would not buy at those points Instead, wait for a swing low. And if we did that, we could buy either at these two points, which created swing lows, or we could buy at this point. Price continued to go up after reversals, however, not before pullbacks created swing lows, which would provide better long entry points. So that is the guideline. If bullish reversal is at pendulum high. And remember, I mentioned if a stock is at pendulum high, it doesn't mean nowhere near means that it is going to pull back. It may stay at pendulum high for a very long time. Unlike the shorter term overbought oversold stretch indicator or jump and thrust extension plus intensity indicator, those are different. Pendulum high level may remain for a very long time for strong stocks. So we are not going to chase a bullish reversal at pendulum high, wait for a pullback and look for a buy setup. Incidentally here, even if you bought on this day, it was not stopped out if Q protection stop loss was used. Which stock was this? This was ABB. Another example. This is ALGEN, ALGN. Here we have bullish reversal at pendulum low. That is an optimal buy point. And once again, bullish reversal at pendulum low. The two bullish reversals, one and two at pendulum low, provided effective early signal to look for a buy setup. Afterwards, the stock made a significant up move. You would wait for a proper Q trade setup after the bullish reversal at pendulum low. It may happen at the reversal point, that is great. Otherwise, we will wait for a proper Q trade setup. Note that there were two bearish reversals too. Number three and four bearish reversals at pendulum low. 
as I mentioned, reward risk ratio would not be attractive to try to trade bearish reversal at pendulum. But I also mentioned that the pendulum extreme level may continue for a long time. So it is possible to short bearish reversal at pendulum low, but then we would need to wait for a proper Q trade setup at the next swing high. In both of these cases, number three and number four, the Q short setup at swing high did not materialize. So you would not try to take any short trade based on the bearish reversal at pendulum low. And in general, as you can see, the reward ratio is not attractive. In general, I don't try to trade bearish reversal at pendulum low or bullish reversal at pendulum high. In general, to have higher reward risk ratio, you may focus only on the bullish reversal at pendulum low and bearish reversal at pendulum high. Last of the reversal signals. Headwind. Headwind is a unique signal. It attempts to anticipate a trend change before it happens. It appears at the end of an uptrend or downtrend. The stock is expected to be in the prevailing trend when headwind appears. So when bullish headwind appears, we expect the stock to be in a downtrend. When bearish headwind appears, we expect the stock to be in an uptrend. So if the stock is in an uptrend, only then a bearish headwind can appear. And if the stock is in a downtrend, only then a bullish headwind can appear. It is not a trend following signal. It is shown as diamond or dot. In Q global, it's shown as diamond. In Q, it's shown as a dot on the entry daily chart template and backdrop weekly chart template. You may, if you wanted, you could plot it on intraday chart also. This is not as fast indicator as stretch release. That's why when I use five minute interval with fine tune chart, I usually do not use the headwind signal on that chart. That's why you may not have headwind on default fine tune chart. However, if you are using intraday charts with say, 30 minute interval, one hour interval, you may add headwind on that chart also. You may add headwind to fine tune chart if you are using fine tune chart with 30 minute interval, or you may simply use Q entry chart with 30 minute interval. And I will suggest the later. So you don't have to create a new chart template. If at all you want to see if there is a headwind reversal on intraday 30 minute, one hour interval, instead of trying to create a fine tune chart for that, you may simply copy the daily entry chart and change its interval because headwind is already part of the entry daily chart template. If the headwind appears at a minimum, always, always, this is always triple underline at a minimum, be cautious with trades in the prevailing trend direction. So if a bearish headwind appears, always be cautious with trades in the long direction that you already have. If a bullish headwind appears, always be cautious with trades you already have in the bearish direction. May take a headwind reversal trade also. After being cautious with trending trades we already have, may take a headwind reversal trade if checklist conditions are met. And look for headwind trades if price is beyond the boundary lines. That is bearish headwind above upper boundary, bullish headwind below lower boundary, or maybe at the lower boundary, at the upper boundary. Do not take headwind trade if price is already at or near value area. Because for reversal trades, like headwind, similar to box trade also, we want to book profit quickly. So if we short at upper boundary, we want to book profit at value area. 
if price is already at value area, we may not find attractive reward risk ratio when planning the trade. So we don't try to take headwind trade if price is already near or at value area. Usually they don't appear near or at value area, but sometime it may appear there. If a headwind leads to a price reversal and then price retests the watermark created by the prior headwind, there is a good chance price will reverse again. This is because some buying or selling is probably still left at that level. And I use this pattern often. If we have a stock in an uptrend, have a bearish reversal that can lead to a price drop. And then price may be slowly trying to retest that level, maybe even creating a false breakout and then goes below the watermark created by the first bearish headwind then we may take this false upside breakout box shot setup with more confidence. It doesn't have to be a false breakout. You may take the box setup, box shot setup, even if it reverses from the watermark resistance, at which level headwind came earlier. And for this part pass, we are able to combine weekly and daily chart. If there is no bearish headwind at the watermark level in the daily, but it is there in weekly, then also we may take the watermark reversal trade with higher confidence. Another thing to note, th this is talking about headwind on one stock or instrument. If you see headwinds coming in related instruments at the same time, then it is even more significant. For example, headwinds may come in multiple, let's say, energy stocks, energy sector stocks. So we may even think about industry level, let's say auto manufacturing stocks. If very scheduled is coming in multiple of them together at the industry level or the sector level or the market level, then we have to be extra cautious. And that is what I check. And you may also check when you use Q Finder. At the weekly level in every weekend webinar, I check if there is a significant percentage of bearish headwinds, especially in the weekly interval. You may do the same for daily interval also. And if headwind signal appears in the same instrument in multiple intervals at the same time, that is also of additional significance. So one example, maybe we have weekly and daily headwind coming together. And sometimes you may find, I mentioned about looking at 30 minute, 60 minute interval. Sometimes you may find a bearish headwind in daily and let's say 30 minute interval at the same time. So same instrument, multiple interval, having headwinds adds to the significance and same interval, multiple instruments at the same time also adds to the significance. Let's look at an example. This is a familiar instrument. Just a while ago, I showed how to use reversal signal, Q reversal, at pendulum extreme and I use the instrument FFTY. And this is also FFTY, but this is weekly interval. I'm reading from the other monitor. I named the charts with the instrument name. If I put that correctly, it is FFTY weekly interval. Let's look at the annotations. Number one, when bearish headwind appears, uh, yes, certainly it's weekly, appears in the weekly at a minimum because us on any existing long position. So we had bearish headwinds. We will not take a short setup based on weekly headwind signal because all our short setups, long setups, they are 
designed to be on daily interval. But when you see weekly berry scheduling will be cautious. Remember, if you are following me on the YouTube channel, I could catch the very top of several tech stocks and also QQQ because not, not the recent top, the earlier top when the berry scheduling came together in QQQ and some of the mega cap tech stocks. So whenever a bearish headwind comes, either daily, weekly, we are cautious. In this case, for FFTUI, the bearish headwind came in the weekly interval. And you may look for a short entry using the daily chart. I'm sure for the second and third headwinds, you would find attractive short setups on the daily interval. This one we don't know looking at the weekly. However, looking at the weekly, we are sure that the second and third bearish headwinds gave very profitable swing short trades in the daily interval. And point number two, here we have in the same instrument, a bullish headwind. When the bullish headwind appears in the Weekly interval, look for a buy setup in the daily interval. And looking at the run, we are sure to have attractive long swing trade using the daily interval. That's how we use the headwind signal. Next, we move to the volatility category of indicators. First one is option volatility. So volatility category of indicators are multiple. Here we are talking about option volatility. Option volatility is useful for option trading, not used for stock trading. It is simulated in Q Global because the underlying platform, Metastar, does not yet have the required detailed data. It has some data, but not enough to show the true option volatility. It is simulated. So if I'm trading options, I may view the volatility on Q Elite, not really on Q Global. In general, this is the strategy. If option volatility is high, try to use option selling strategy, sell the put. And sometimes selling the put may be too risky depending on the account size or the trader's temperament or how fundamentally strong the stock is, how the industry is moving, how is the market acting based on all that. If you are willing to hold the stock long term anyway, then if option volatility is high, it makes every sense to sell the put instead of buying the stock. Because volatility is a big factor in options pricing. And if you find a stock that has dropped, you wanted to buy the stock anyway. So at the lowest point, maybe it is bouncing up from trend line support, memory trend line, or a deep watermark support. Option prices will be so high, instead of buying the stock, it makes every sense to short the put. If you were going to buy the stock anyway, that's a big qualifier. If you were going to buy the stock anyway, the extreme high volatility after a sharp drop, when stock hits a trend line support like memory support, it makes every sense to short the put. But still, if you are not comfortable, and why would you not be comfortable? That means you are not really confident to buy and hold the stock anyway. Logically, there could not be any other reason why you are not comfortable shorting the put when volatility is so high. Logically, there isn't, but trading is not always logical. So if you are uncomfortable, instead of shorting the put, you may short put vertical. That will also have volatility in your favor. On the other hand, if option volatility is low, try to use option buying strategies, either buy vertical or you may buy naked option. I usually avoid buying naked options, except one time I favorite I like to take them is after a long uptrend when price is at pendulum high, price extreme high, maybe jump and thrust high. 
then I have a short setup. Then the volatility will be very low. If I buy put option, time ticker will be against me, but volatility will be in my favor. And the volatility being in my favor compensates more than the disadvantage of having time decay. That is my experience. The volatility being in favor, that is volatility will increase. And if it starts to move fast, volatility will explode. And that much more than compensates for the disadvantage of time decay. And here, unlike shorting the put, we are not taking too much risk. Even if the stock goes up a lot, we cannot lose much money. Just the price of the put option, which will be cheap because we are buying low volatility. So that is the one situation where I may go for naked option, naked put option instead of using put vertical. However, it is also okay to buy put vertical when volatility is low. Option volatility is plotted as either a line or histogram in volatility chart. On Q Elite, it is a line indicator. On Q Global, it is a histogram integrator. It helps to visualize how option pricing is changing over time. Instead of using option volatility in itself, you may look at the line or the histogram to see how it is changing, but instead of using it in itself, it is more useful in trading to look at the extremities or compare current option volatility with historical volatility and we use the uncertainty indicator for that. It is a percentile calculation on option volatility. Simulated if the underlying platform does not have full option data, therefore simulated on Q Global as Metastock currently does not provide the required detailed data. So if I'm again trading options, I will probably not use Q Global to look at the uncertainty candle color. You may see the raw option volatility line or histogram. However, it makes more sense to use uncertainty in trading decisions because Absolute option volatility is not important. What is important is the current option volatility relative to its range for a particular stock or instrument. And that is shown by uncertainty. Uncertainty is used to color the candles in the volatility chart template. Magenta red, remember magenta red is bearish or lower side. So magenta red, when we are talking about volatility, it will mean low volatility, not low price. Magenta red is low. So in this case, not low price, but low volatility for stocks, it will tend to appear at higher price. Cyan green is high volatility, not high price, high volatility for stocks. It will tend to be at a low price level. Yellow is mid volatility. It is also available in Q Elite Sonar. Because Q Elite is based on Tristation, which is a brokerage platform, has detail options data. So it is available not only as a chart candle coloring indicator, but also as a scanning indicator in Q Elite Sonar. Once again, similar to option volatility, Look for buy option strategies when uncertainty is low. Look for sell option strategies when uncertainty is high. Expected move shows the expected stock move for the next week. It is calculated based on volatility of options. It is available only on QLE. Expected move is plotted as upper and lower range levels on the volatility chart template. How do we use it? The option sellers tend to be accurate on their predictions. They better be accurate, right? If option sellers are not accurate, 
they don't survive so we may trade with them or at least trading with them may be difficult but at least not trade against them the expected move is the maximum move the option seller expects and around 70 to 80 percent of the time a stock remains within expected move how to use it we'll refrain from buying if the stock hits expected move upper line in one or two days and similarly if it drops to expected move low in one or two days don't short it it may be too late i usually do not use expected move to enter trades but use it to decide why not to enter the trade like i mentioned if price is already at upper expected move especially in the beginning of the week one or two days or even three days avoid buying now remember if a stock is hitting upper expected move at the end of the week friday that is very reasonable then it is not too late to buy looking at the technical charts if we have a buy signal but if we have a stock hitting upper expected move monday tuesday itself then it is too late to buy on friday it is not too late because stock was expected to go to that level similarly price is already at the lower expected move especially in the first few days of a week avoid shorting price at expected move may also be used to book profit or apply trailing stop when we see the expected move is reached especially in the first few days of the week we have some more volatility indicators that is volatility band and volatility squeeze volatility band is the upper and lower bands based on stock volatility based on volatility but a stock's volatility it is not based on option pricing but based on how volatile the stock is like boundary lines volatility bands show if price is extended boundary lines show that using price range and volatility bands show that using stocks volatility they are different both are indicating extension using ranges but one is using stocks price move and other is using stocks volatility not option volatility but stocks volatility i do not use volatility bands for stock trading stock trading i use the boundary lines real use of volatility band is not in the band itself at least in q methodology but the squeeze of it squeeze shows if volatility band is squeezed breakout from a prolonged squeeze may lead to a significant move you may use that to trade in the breakout direction that's the use of volatility band the real use is in the squeeze and release from the squeeze it is shown as dotted indicator on the volatility band or a separate squid shaped indicator squeeze is shown in red color red dots a red squid line squeeze release is in green yellow means absence of both squeeze as well as squeeze release so neither it is contracting nor it is expanding if the volatility band is contracting it will show up as squeeze that is red dots or using a squid indicator it will show the squeeze is taking place and when it is releasing the squeeze it will show up as green dots or using green squid indicator when it is neither expanding nor contracting then it will show as yellow sometimes volatility squeeze may show up in a normal price move normal swing up swing down because the mathematics will pick it up but that is not useful in trading we have to see on the chart if we really have a tradable squeeze breakout and tradable squeeze release 
sometimes it may not be in a narrow range like here or it may not be contracting from higher volatility so we have to look at the chart pattern first so to see if we have a meaningful squeeze on the chart and then use the squeeze release to trade in the breakout direction you may scan for stocks that are in squeeze or squeeze release usually you may look for squeeze release instead of just looking for squeeze it is available in q sonar as well now it is not a part of any checklist so usually i will not scan for it usually i will not do but if you are focused on only stocks that are inside a squeeze and now breaking out of squeeze if that is your primary type of trade then you may scan for stocks that are in squeeze or in squeeze release but for me the primary trade setups are already defined in q systems both flow box bounce breakout pullback i already have those defined so i scan for those and now after that if i see a squeeze release is taking place that is an additional advantage but q systems is not designed only for me there are traders who focus primarily on stocks breaking out of squeeze they may scan for that pattern it is available in q systems let's look at some examples Q squeeze release in this stock leads to a significant up move and this is a chart from Q global in Q global the squeeze and the release from the squeeze they are shown by a separate squid like indicator squeeze is shown by red color squeeze release by green color so in this case the squeeze release happened right on this candle and that led to a significant up move let's look at the same stock using q elite same stock using q volatility chart on q elite here the squeeze release is shown by dots on the volatility band so we have the squeeze red dot and then expansion that is squeeze release using green dots this is the option volatility at the bottom is put call ratio some traders use it i don't find it useful enough to make trading decisions the theory behind this is if a stock is at a low price level and you see very high put call ratio which will stand out like this kind of skyscrapers if we see that at a low price level who is selling so many put options at a low price level the thinking is that those must be professional sellers or those who want to buy the stock at a low price level remember i mentioned at low price level option volatility is high so professionals like to short the put instead buying the stock apparently mr warren buffett also does that so that is the thought behind it that if you have very high put call ratio especially at low price level then the price may stop there however i don't find that as a reliable enough indicator so i have the q trade setups they are extremely reliable i rely on them on top of that if i find very high put call ratio it's an added advantage so we have the squeeze release here 
option volatility plotted as line put call ratio. Let me go back to the Q global volatility chart template for the same stock. Volatility band is calculated using stocks volatility. So that is the same in Q global and Q LA. Therefore, squeeze and squeeze release are also same in Q global and Q LA. But the option volatility, which is shown here as histogram, not as line, that is simulated. And therefore, the candle color that is uncertainty, here uncertainty is high, here uncertainty is low, uncertainty is low, uncertainty is medium. In Q global, that is simulated because the option volatility itself is simulated. The uncertainty is a percentile calculation on option volatility. If I go back to Q Elite, here the option volatility is based on detailed option chain data, accurate information in trade station. So this option volatility is accurate and therefore the candle coloring using uncertainty is very accurate for option trading. That means on this day, option volatility was very high, uncertainty was very high. So here, what kind of strategy we could use? Selling options. What kind of option could we sell? We could sell call. But selling naked call is very dangerous. So I will never suggest that or do that myself. I will not sell the call. I could sell call vertical. On the other hand, let's say at this point, option volatility was very low. Uncertainty was also very low. So when the stock is starting to recover, I will look for a buy setup using stocks, of course, or I could use option buying strategies. I don't like to buy naked calls. I could use long call vertical instead of using short put vertical. When do I sometimes use naked option buying? That is when option volatility is low and if I have a short setup. In this case, the chart is not showing any short setup, but when option volatility or rather uncertainty, option volatility itself is not decisive enough but uncertainty is coloring the candles for me. That is very easy and unambiguous to use. So when uncertainty is low at a high price level, I am looking to short the stock. I could use short stock or I could use naked buy put. That is also okay. That's how we use the different indicators, volatility based indicators together. Now, when we had squeeze release at this point, it in fact gave a very nice trade setup. This is the same stock. And once again, you see how different indicators come together. This is the same stock using Q entry chart template, not Q volatility chart template. The Q squeeze release was accompanied by a memory resistance trend line breakout, which happened with high activity. Not very high or extreme high, no dot on the activity bar, but high because it is thick line and it broke out of memory trend line resistance. So we could buy it more confidently. Also, if you look back, it displayed a bullish headwind another bullish headwind. So we could start to get ready to buy the stock, but we would find existing trend line resistance. So we would not buy at this bullish headwind signals. This was the first day when all the existing trend line resistances were broken. There was no trend line resistance after that. Otherwise, they would appear in this chart. So this was the perfect day to take a breakout long trade. And that would also be supported by the Q volatility squeeze release. What stock was it? This was AMD. 
relative performance category of indicator, which is only one relative performance. Relative performance is a stock's performance relative to the benchmark. For the USA, S&P 500 is used as the benchmark. For global markets, you may choose the benchmark. We use Q global for global markets. For that, we can choose the benchmark. By default, it is set to S&P 500, but if you are trading in India, you may set it to Nifty 50. If you are using Q Global for UK market, you may set it to FTSE index, etc. Relative performance is plotted as a line on the entry daily and backdrop weekly chart template. It has no scale. There is no need to read its level from the Y axis. If it is tilting up, that is bullish. Tilting down is bearish. And that is a common way to interpret all line indicators. All line indicators, if they are tilting up, they are bullish. Tilting down, they are bearish. Same is true for relative performance. And here, bullish or bearish means relative to the benchmark. Bullish, when we say relative performance is bullish, does not mean a stock is going up. It is doing better. It is more bullish relative to benchmark S&P 500 for US market. For trend following, go flow trade setup, buy only if relative performance is tilting up. Short only if relative performance is tilting down. So we want our buy candidate to go up more than the market. We want our short candidate to go down more than the market. That is for trend following trend. For reversal trade setups, it is not required to align relative performance. That is for box, bounce, headwind setup. You don't have to align relative performance using checklist. However, you may find it aligned anyway when the other checklist conditions are fulfilled. Observing relative performance on intraday fine tune chart may provide additional confidence to short if it is tilting down or buying if it is tilting up. Do you plot relative performance on fine tune chart? If you are simply swing trading, you don't need that. And I don't recommend it to clutter the chart. So if you are mostly swing trading, you don't need to plot relative performance on fine tune chart. But if you are a regular intraday trader, then you may add relative performance to fine tune chart. I don't suggest it for swing trading and position trading. Only for day traders, if you are a regular day trader. Let's look at an example. When this stock displayed Q squeeze release and broke out of memory resistance on this day, the relative performance was going up at the same time that provided additional confidence to take the long trend. So of course we know what stock it is. It is same stock AMD that we discussed just now using squeeze release. We saw it had a trend line breakout. After that, there was no more trend line resistance ahead. And now we see it was a trend following trend. Breakout trade is a kind of trend following trend. We would like to have the relative performance tilting up which was true in this case. That's how we use relative performance. Next, the last category of Q indicators for defining stop loss, the protection signal. Protection level is drawn on the candle chart to decide stop level. It is available on the stop level chart template, magenta dots, stop for long position, cyan dots, stop for short position. It is calculated based on a stock's volatility. What does it mean that protection is decided based on stock's volatility? If the stock is very volatile, the stop will be farther away. If the stock is less volatile, the stop, if in a safe stop, will be nearer. 
that's what is meant by it is calculated based on stocks volatility the protection signal aims to keep the stop safe distance away however not so far away as to incur a big loss in case of stop out what it also means is that when for example we are buying a stock If we decide our entry price, let's say based on go flow signal, we use our stop level using protection signal. Go flow entry point, stop loss using protection. It does not lead to a big loss in case a stop is hit. What does it really mean? It means that often, even with protection as top level, we'll be able to decide target, let's say upper boundary, that will give us attractive reward risk ratio. That's what is important. It keeps us safe distance away, but safe can be very far away. In that case, using boundary line as profit target, we would not have attractive reverse risk ratio. So it doesn't keep stop so far away. It keeps a safe distance away, but not too far. So often we will be able to find an attractive reward risk ratio trade. In this case, I took an example of Goit flow, but you will be able to do that for all other Q trade setups also. So it's safe distance away, but not so far away. So as to incur big loss, that also means we are often able to find an attractive reward risk ratio trade set. And it can be used for not only the initial stop loss, but also break even stop and trailing stop. Different traders may apply initial break even trailing stop in different ways, especially the time when to change from initial to break even stop or initial to trailing or break even to trailing stop. How to change from one to the next to the next may vary from trader to trader. I'll explain at least one such way. If you look at the Q protection indicator, it actually has two levels. Sometimes they coincide other times they differ. Most of the times, even if they differ, they are not much. Therefore, for most trades, you may use either one as the stop level. Even if they differ, most of the time they don't differ much. Sometimes they may differ more than usual. In those cases, Decide which one to use by looking at which level gives attractive reward risk ratio. Protection is used to calculate trade quantity also to maintain same risk in each trade. It's important for swing traders to manage risk as it is to book profit. Therefore, we have to decide the number of shares to trade based on distance between entry and stop level. The stop level is the protection level and you may use Q diary tool to automatically show you the number of shares to trade when you enter the entry and stop level and some global parameter like what percentage of your total equity you want to risk in each trade. That is a global parameter in Q diary and based on a particular stock's entry and stop price level, it shows the number of shares to trade. That's an important use of Q protection signal. Let's look at some example. This is a daily chart showing the Q protection signal. Magenta color means it is protection for long position. For this example, I have removed the protection level for short trade. 
let us read the annotation one by one. Point number one. After the entry in this stock using queue long setup, the protection level provided effective initial break-even as well as trailing stop. I'll explain. The protection let you capture a big portion of the up move in this case. So we could buy the stock on this day or looking at the small upper tail, you could buy it the next day. Initially, the stop loss will be using the protection signal below recent low. Remember what I mentioned, if the stock's volatility is low, which was true in this case, then the protection signal will be nearby. So we will be proven wrong if the stock falls little bit below this low. Here volatility was low, so stop was not far away from the swing low. And that was all right. We can see that very well. The stop was honored. It never came down. Instead, it went up. And when it went up, how could we change from initial stop to break even stop? Let's read this point three. You could change the stop from initial stop to break even stop once the protection level went above the entry price. Initial target was not yet reached. So we can see after the trade entry, the stock went up and the Q protection signal went up on this day. That is the close of this candle. The protection level went above the entry price level, this white horizontal dot I plotted. So on this day, you could change from initial stop to break even stop. It is important not to move the stop before that because this protection level is calculated based on volatility and keeps us safe distance away. So on this day, this was safe distance away. Before that, trying to move to break even stop would have been too early. And also note on that day, the initial profit target, which in this case I assume about equidistant from entry price. So entry to stop, same as entry to target, which was hit maybe one or two day later after we move to break even stop. Let's read number four. Along the way, as the stock went up after setting our break even stop, you could book partial profit as the initial profit target for the swing trade was reached. So, along the way, any anywhere from here to here, you could book partial profit. So, first we had initial stop, then we moved to break even stop. And after booking initial profit, only after that, the guideline is to change to trailing stop. So once you book partial profit, maybe half, maybe two third, not one third, I will think it is too small for swing trading, either half or two third, then we switch from break even to trailing stop. So if we book partial profit on this day, we would move our stop here. And then onward, we'll keep on moving stop up as trailing stop. And we'll get stopped out at this point. So let's read number five once more. You may change to trailing stop only after reaching initial profit target, not before that. Before that, we may keep our stop at break even. And sometimes some traders may like to keep it at the initial stop also. It's a matter of personal choice. In real life trading, it doesn't matter. If your trade is a proper Q trade setup, it doesn't matter whether you move to break even once the protection goes above entry price or not. If your trade setup is selected well, you can just to either of them, move to break even once protection goes above entry price or 
keep the initial stop unless initial profit target is hit. Once initial profit target is hit for swing trading, it is always useful to apply trailing stop. And trailing stop is meant to be hit. The moment you switch from break even or initial to trailing stop, you may expect that it will be hit because trailing stops are meant to be hit. They are meant to protect the profit, safe distance away, but not too far away. They are meant to be hit and mostly they will be hit. So if you are thinking of position trading or longer term investing, then we don't use trailing stop. It will be hit. It will be hit much before it becomes a true position trade, spending multiple weeks and certainly true long-term investment spending multiple months. So we use trailing stop only for swing trading. If we are position trading or longer term investing, how could we apply the stops? It's not annotated on this chart, but let me try to explain. Let's say this same stock we wanted to buy for longer term investing. And we bought, let's say at the same point, it looks like a nice, nice point at probably pendulum low or at least at watermark low. Maybe there was a breakout. In fact, there was a breakout here. This was AU, the gold miner, and this is the stock I shared right at this point on our traders forum. So we could buy it. We could now see how we could also apply stops. Now, if it was for position trading or longer term investing, the initial stop would still be the same. If you want to book profit once it has moved significant distance up, that is, I think, even for position trading, once it has made a large enough move, it may be okay to book partial profit. But we will not move to trailing stop. You may or may not book partial profit when, let's say, it has gone up by, let's say, 15, 20%. I think that's a decent percentage profit for position trading also. IBT talks about 20%, but depending on the stock, you may choose 15% also. Whether you book profit or not, when it starts to pull back, we don't apply trailing stop. Instead, we'll wait for a swing low and only after we have a nice looking swing low, we'll move stop to below the swing low. So in effect, it is like another initial stop level for this swing buy opportunity. Maybe there is another go with flow or pullback or, or maybe a breakout setup at this point as if we are applying initial stop loss for the new or maybe the add-on position. It's exactly like the initial stop. And if the stock continue to go up, we'll not apply trailing stop. And again, we'll wait for a swing low and for stock to go up. What we are doing, we are looking for an add-on entry point. And when we have an add-on entry point, we like to move stop there. Doesn't make sense to have an add-on entry and then don't get stop out if we are proven wrong, because then we are adding to the risk of the initial position from the add-on position. That doesn't make sense. So whenever we have an add-on entry point, only then we may move stop to the next level, not using trailing stop. And if you are doing position trading, longer term investing, I mentioned when discussing backdrop chart template, that it is also an effective mechanism to use the concept of boss direction line and hold on to the trade unless there is a close, not penetration below, but close below the boss direction line on the weekly interval. And if you wanted to use protection on the daily interval, this is how you could use for position trading or longer term investing. In practice, you will probably use a combination of protection on daily interval and the boss direction line on weekly interval for position trading or longer term investing. For swing trading, you 
will probably not use the boss direction on weekly interval. You will simply use the protection on daily interval that is appropriate and more than sufficient. I would like to mention one thing more that after booking initial profit for swing trading, if you don't want to use trailing stop, that is also fine. So let's say we don't want to use trailing stop because trailing stops are meant to be hit. So maybe we entered the stock in this case, AU gold miner at this point, it went up by let's say 15, 20%, we booked profit but we don't want to use trailing stop. In that case, we will wait for the next add-on entry point. Add-on means another proper Q buy trade setup and then use the stop level for that entry to move stop. All the time we may not change the stop or we may move to break even and then from break even to in effect trailing stop, but not using the protection indicator itself, waiting for the next or add-on entry point, add-on for position trading, next for swing trading, next entry point, and then use the stop for the next entry to move stop from break even, or maybe even from the initial stop if you didn't move the initial stop. So you could do that for swing trading also, this technique of moving stop only after we have the next entry in the same direction that is applicable not only for position or longer term investing, it is applicable for swing trading also when you don't want to get stopped out with trailing stop. Those were all the Q technical indicators. And I mentioned along the way, which chart template, which indicator belongs to. Let's go through the chart templates again. So you are now not looking at indicators as starting point, but chart templates as starting point. Q chart templates are designed to carry out a distinct trading task. Every chart template has a task in mind either a trading task like entry exit or to look at a stock from a different perspective. No two templates have the same purpose and no two templates look the same. We saw this simplicity or unambiguity of design at the indicator level also. No two indicators actually look the same. The more you study the indicators, you will realize no two indicators look the same and no two templates also look the same. And because of this, we don't need any label for the indicators or any label for the template. The main purpose of each template is listed below. They may be used for other secondary purposes, like, and this is always valid, simply to observe a stock's movement from different angles. It's very valuable and you may do that by applying different chart templates from custom menu in Q Global or using hotkeys in Q Elite or in Q Elite, you may use different workspaces or tabs to look at the same stock from all the different angles. It takes only a couple of seconds. So we, we can do the complete analysis in less than a minute or so. What are the Q predefined chart templates? As I mentioned earlier, you don't need to create any chart template. Everything a trader needs is already there in a chart template. Entry daily is to decide trade entry based on daily checklist. Also used to decide initial price target for a swing trade. So entry daily can help us decide the initial profit target also. What does it mean? How does it help to decide trade entry means if we look at the Q trade checklists, each trade setup, go with flow box, bounce, headwind, they have unambiguous checklists. The checklists have a list of indicators to check and every indicator that we need to check for every Q trade setup that has a checklist, 
you have all those indicators in the entry daily. So single chart template will be enough to decide trade entry for all the trades based on checklist. And also you are able to decide initial profit target for all those Q trade setups using the same chart template. And later on, I added a number of additional indicators, HSI like signals. Many of the Q traders also use HSI charts. Now they make read the signals from the alternate Q chart, entry chart. Alternate Q entry chart has some Q signals also like big move, like channel in Q global, but many other signals in the alternate chart are like HSI signals. They provide additional signals. They are not required to confirm Q trade checklists, but provides actionable insight. So if I have two Q trade setups, let's say go with flow setup, both of them meet the necessary sufficient checklist conditions. And one of them, have additional momentum signals in entry to template, then I may favor that one, not the other without additional momentum signals like Kauna, Mobo Breakout, from a Squeeze, etc. Those are the entry templates. The entry template is part of Q system, core Q system, and entry to alternate to is an additional template that I provide to people who are already familiar with the HSI terminology. I don't want to take training on HSI like signals. So if somebody already knows how to use those signals, I'm happy to provide the addendum. After the two daily entry templates, we have backdrop weekly template that is to confirm trade entry based on weekly checklist. Most of the Q trade setups have weekly checklist condition as well. Only bounce does not have it, but go with flow, box, headwind. They have something to check on the weekly chart and whatever we need to check on the weekly chart is available in the backdrop weekly template. And together the daily entry and weekly backdrop is the at a glance template. So that means using this single combo chart, we can decide all the Q trade setups for entry as well as exit swing trading. And there is a different version of at a glance template that is having weekly backdrop and not one entry daily template, but two entry daily templates. One is the core Q entry and another is the additional momentum signal entry time. The entry backdrop and at a glance weekly daily chart templates have alternative versions that show jump and thrust plots as histogram indicators too, not, not only as band indicator. I have to complete the sentence here. Usually you don't need to use this alternate templates that shows jump and thrust as histograms. But if sometimes you want to see how jump and thrust are getting extended, then you may use it. I don't look at it all the time, unless if I find an instrument that is at high jump, low jump at very extreme level, only then I may sometimes redraw the stock using Usually I just use the at a glance template so I can see jump and thrust in weekly daily together, which is based on the entry jump and thrust and backdrop jump and thrust. So I may just apply the at a glance jump and thrust template. When do I do that? Only when I see a stock is at high jump, low jump, I may see how that happened, how the jump and thrust went to high or low levels. After the weekly daily, we have Q intraday entry chart template, which is also called precise entry chart template because it is used for precise entry of swing trading. Or you may say fine tune chart template. 
fine tuning the swing trade entry. And of course it is intraday trade entry template. The primary template for intraday trading, secondary template for swing trading. I use five minute interval for this template in the morning session, 10 minute in the afternoon session. It may be used to precisely enter swing trades on the day after the signal day. So if a stock gave go flow long setup yesterday, I didn't take the trade near the close. Today I'm trying to enter it. Then I may use the fine tune chart to precisely take the position. I will not probably blindly place a market order, not even I will place an order above the high of previous day. If I'm able to watch the market in the morning session, I will watch the stock using fine tune chart to precisely enter the trade to try to get it at a lower price or using an early range breakout. Both are possible. If I'm trading a swing trade the day after signal day, then I use the fine tune chart to precisely take the trade. It is not used to exit swing trade. It may be used to precisely enter a swing trade, but not used to exit swing trade. Swing trades are exited using the initial profit targets for different trade setups, like upper boundary for growth flow trade, etc. And those initial exit points are available on Q entry daily or at a glance weekly daily chart template. Intraday trades on the other hand are both entered and exited using this template. That's why it is a primary chart template for intraday trading, day trading and secondary chart template for swing trading. After that, we have the price extreme or pendulum template daily interval. All the templates have a default interval associated with it. And we hardly ever need to change the interval. Did we ever discuss any exception? Yes, I discussed one exception. And I mentioned if you are at all looking at a stock with 30 minute interval, then we have to decide which template to use. Do we use entry template with 30 minute interval or fine tune template with 30 minute interval. I will prefer to use entry template, daily entry template with 30 minute interval so that I can see the headwind signal. And I may then create a combo template with daily entry chart. Again, entry template, but with 30 minute interval and then a fine tune template with five or 10 minute interval, depending on morning or afternoon session I'm using. So that is the only case where I use a template with an interval that is not its default interval. Other than that, you will probably never need to change the default interval of a template. So pendulum template, for example, is never required to change the interval is always daily. This shows how a stock is moving between pendulum levels or price extreme levels. You may use it to visually decide longer term investment by points. These are points where stock is reversing from pendulum low. And as I mentioned, you may scan for them using finder, sonar, etc. Very useful for longer term investing in strong fundamental stocks, wait for them to go to pendulum low, let it start to reverse and then wait for a cute trade setup. Now you don't probably open pendulum template all the time because pendulum is also a band indicator on entry and backdrop templates. So you already have the information as band indicators. If you want to see how it is moving from candle to candle as price is going up or down, then only you open the pendulum template. Again, it is mostly used for longer term investing or maybe entry for position trading also. Not so much for swing trading. Then we have the long term pivot daily template. Shows the longer term pivots yearly and quarterly 
two pivots along with their six resistance support levels r1 r2 r3 resistance levels so if this is pivot there will be r1 r2 r3 there will be s1 s2 s3 three support three resistance around the pivot level and we'll have one set of those for quarterly interval another set of those for yearly interval used to visually see how price is moving between and around the pivot levels. Sometimes you may find a watermark support, a box long setup that is also happening, let's say at quarterly pivot. So that will give you additional confidence to take the trade. There are also pivots for intraday time frame. That is the short term pivot intraday template shows the short term pivots which is the weekly pivot so it is the weekly pivot along with again the r1 r2 r3 and s1 s2 s3 three resistance levels above the intraday pivot and three support levels below the intraday pivot again used to visually see how price is moving between and around the pivot levels usually only used by regular intraday traders usually not used for precision entry for swing trades because for that fine-tuned template is enough only if you are regularly doing day trading let's say using futures then you will of course use fine-tuned template that is the primary template for day trading or intraday trades and you may in that case also open the short-term pivot template on a different monitor or maybe if you're traveling using laptop maybe same monitor but you would like to open the short term pivot also only if you are doing regular intraday trading again for precision entry of swing trading this template is not required it will be an overkill fine tune has everything that we need for precision entry of swing trade then we have the stop level template it may be used for daily or intraday interval both. You will use it with intraday interval five or 10 minutes for day trading. You will use it for daily interval for either swing trading or position trading or even for longer term investment, just like I explained a while ago. It shows the protection levels for long and short trades used to decide initial break even and trailing stops. And I explained different ways to decide trailing stop, when to move stop from initial to break even, break even to trailing, or break even to maybe next higher stop or initial to next higher stop. All of those you are able to decide from this single template. You'll use the default daily interval for swing trading, position trading, longer term investing. You will usually not use it with weekly interval for longer term investment. For that, you will use the boss direction line on weekly interval in combination with stop level on daily. Usually people don't use the protection signal on weekly. However, you could do that. You could do that, but I have not seen myself using it that way, or I have not seen many other traders using it that way. Instead, they use a concept like boss direction line on weekly interval and use stop level protection signal only on daily interval. Then the last chart template, volatility chart template. We looked at it today using Q Global as well as Q Elite. Used to see option volatility level and decide option strategy. And we saw instead of level, we use uncertainty, which is more visual, easy to decide whether we have a favorable option buying strategy or option selling strategy using uncertainty, which is using the option volatility indicator. It is also used to see if it is too late to take a swing trade using expected move and certainly used to confirm volatility squeeze release for breakout trades. I'll use Q global, the templates are very similar. I will use Q elite only when, only when probably that templates are 
more accurate on QLIT, like the volatility chart template. Let's open a stock. Let's open any stock. Let's open. Let's look at the market. Let's look at SPY. I'm opening it with entry daily chart template. I'll magnify and let's look at the indicators. Maybe I will look at the same thing using QLIT also so that we are comfortable with the layouts. Let's open SPY with entry chart template in QLIT as well, because the charts themselves have some difference because of differences in the underlying platforms. Q entry in Q global, daily interval. Let's see the daily interval here. At the top, we have the ribbon, which shows the flow colors. Usually, these are the trend following long or short setup points provided the checklist conditions are met. That is what is available in the ribbon in the entry template. Then we have the headwind, bullish at the bottom, bearish at the top, drawn as diamonds. You see there is no label, but you are able to hover on an indicator to see the name. You will probably need that only for the first few days or weeks of using Q systems. So we have headwind. I'm trying to read the indicators from top to bottom. Then we have the candle coloring using traffic light color, yellow, red, green. And cyan, magenta are special cases of traffic light. Those are the flow colors. And you will see in the ribbon, we sometimes have flow colors marked, sometimes we don't have. For example, this bullish flow is not marked in the ribbon. This bearish flow is not marked in the ribbon. Why so? Because it is trying to the best of its capability to decide that this is bearish flow, that is fine. But are we supposed to take a short trade here? And in this case, it correctly decided that no, we should not take a short trade here because the stock is moving in an uptrend. In older versions of Q Global Q Elite, this distinction was not there in the latest version. And I think all of you are using the latest version. There is a distinction between having a bearish flow or bullish flow and having a trade setup as shown on the template itself. Of course, we could apply the checklist and decide that, but on the ribbon, it is trying to do a better job, not just looking at the flow color, but trying to do some more complex calculation. So this point is also not recognized as a go with flow long point, but you could still take a trade at this point, probably using the breakout setup. Probably there was a trend line resistance, which was broken with a gap up move. So that is fine. Or you could simply decide based on the stocks move that yes, there is probably not a valid uptrend, but still the price move with the bullish flow is enough to take that. Trend. In any case, we have a difference between the ribbon telling whether we have a go with flow setup and the flow color. So the ribbon is trying to calculate something extra on top of the flow color. So we have traffic light flow as a special case of traffic light and the setup as a special case of the flow itself. Then we have the upper boundary lines and lower boundary lines. Then we have indecision at the top orange and indecision at the bottom gold dots. 
on top of the candles. Then we have bear release again on top of the candle, tradable bear release. Remember, if the candle color was green, even if we had a bear release, the dot would not appear on the candle, but it would still appear in the band. So it is a bear release and it would be tradable if all the checklist conditions for box short setup are met. So that is bear release and we have a bull release here. Then we have watermark level, the zero lag, resistance and support lines. Then we have the direction lines. You may say the three fast direction lines, or you may say two fast, one medium, magenta, cyan, light blue, and two slow direction lines, yellow and white here, far below. Then we have trend line support and resistance in SPY on this duration. We only have trend line support, memory line support, Memory supports are in green color. If there was any trend line resistance, it would come in red color at the top. So we have trend line support. Then if we go to the band indicators, we have pressure and U-turn. So bullish pressure, bullish pressure, bearish pressure, bearish pressure, bullish U-turn. And here we have bearish U-turn. After that, we have stretch band indicator and stretch release. This is bear release, overbought, and then bear release. Here we have oversold condition and bull release. Draw a line that's easier, yes. So we had a situation where we, were oversold, then the oversold condition went away. We had a bull release, but the bull release would not be tradable because the candle color using traffic light was still red. We can apply box long setup only if candle color is yellow or green. So it was red. Even if there is a bull release, we cannot trade it using box setup and only box setup has release signal as a condition for trade entry. So we don't have a tradable bull release. That's why it's not drawn on the candle, but we still can read the bull release in this case from the band indicator. Then we have pendulum level and we can see again that a stock can remain at pendulum high for a very long time in this case SPY, and we have bearish reversal at pendulum high and here bullish reversal at pendulum high. Then we have the squeeze and squeeze release, red and green respectively. This is Q volatility squeeze, not the alternate squeeze signal in alternate chart. This is Q volatility squeeze and yellow means volatility bands are neither contracting nor expanding. Then we have activity at the bottom. And here at the bottom right corner, we have a symbol that changes. It is nothing but a reading of the last candle. If it is yellow, I think it becomes a non-expressive phase. If it is bullish, it may become a bull. If it is bearish, it may become a bear symbol. Now it is neutral. It's simply trying to read the last candle. Metastock has these different chart portions like a ribbon, like a indicator at the bottom right corner. So I made use of them. Now let's look at the same chart using QLE. By the way, before going to QLE, 
if I hover on an indicator on Q Global, you see it is showing the indicator name. Mostly we will not use it after you have used Q system for a while. In trade station, you right click on an indicator to see the indicator name. Again, mostly we will not use it after you use the system for a while. In trade station, there is no facility for ribbon. So we are not able to indicate whether we have a go with flow setup in the ribbon. Instead, we have an additional band indicator. This is a substitute for Metastox ribbon, an additional band indicator. The other indicators are the same. Traffic light, headwind, I will not go through all the indicators, they are same. But you can see that we have the go with flow possible setup not in the ribbon because there is no ribbon in station. We have used an additional band indicator. Then all the other band indicators are here. In this case, the stretch release on the candle is plotted as cross. Headwind plotted as dot. Indecision plotted as dot as well but different sizes. So you will immediately know whether it is headwind or indecision. Also headwinds are plotted in green and red color. Red bearish headwind, green bullish headwind. And indecision is orange at the top, gold at the bottom. Then we have all the other band indicators, same as in Q Global and activity. I will not go through Q Elite for all the chart templates. You can see the chart templates are exactly the same. Let's go through the remaining chart templates. I'm going to use the custom menu bar at the top that I set up to go through the other templates. Let's read the backdrop signals. In the ribbon, an equivalent of flow. It's not really flow because trade setups are not decided based on weekly interval, but an equivalent of flow in the ribbon, we don't usually use it. Or I may rephrase it, we don't use the ribbon for the weekly interval. We have backdrop color, magenta, cyan, yellow. Bear release, bull release, Indecision at the top, indecision at the bottom, bottom up level, the three direction lines. Bearish pressure, bearish U-turn, bullish pressure, stretch overboard, stretch release. Pendulum or price extreme level, reversal at pendulum level, in this case bullish reversal, here bearish reversal. Then squeeze and squeeze release using Q volatility squeeze, then activity. Now let's look at the alternate entry template. This is Bongo. For Q Global, I'm using the ribbon for Bongo because I have a facility like ribbon. So the ribbon is using Bongo color. The candle colors are traffic light. Then we have the channel. Two channels, the longer term and then the shorter term. Channels are available only on Q Global. Then we have two direction lines, but these are not Q direction lines. In alternate chart template, tail interval, the yellow line is 50 day moving average and the white line is 200 day moving average. The standard moving average lines that HSA like traders use and many other traders use. So for alternate chart template, you can see the appearance of the yellow and white lines are different from Q direction lines. They are dash dot dash dot lines. 
So these are not Q direction lines. The appearance is different. These are 50 day moving average and 200 day moving average. Then we have high jump, high thrust, low jump, low thrust. Then big move up or down. Down means red color. In this case, three dot means for two successive days, we have in Tesla biggest down move of three months. We know that we would be cautious from yesterday itself and today Tesla again drop sharply. Remember the exact same thing happened in Netflix and I pointed that out. I think in Twitter or in webinar, that when we have biggest down move of three months at pendulum high, always look for short trades. In Netflix, we had very profitable intraday short trade. And I can see from today's candle in Tesla using the exact same concept, we could be ready because yesterday itself, we had biggest down move of three months at pendulum high. So we could be ready today and take an intraday short trade using fine tune chart that would be very profitable. It seems looking at the daily, it seems that would be very profitable. We could decide whether we could actually have an entry or not using fine tune chart to see if the early range breakout actually gave us a low risk trade entry point. Okay, so that was big move up down, then viable gap up or down. Then Kahuna, this is normal squeeze not q squeeze this yellow dot is normal squeeze or hsli squeeze the traditional squeeze many other systems users also use the traditional squeeze that is bollinger band inside keltner channel if you wanted to know the detail okay so that was squeeze and after that we have mobile breakout so i grouped them together because this combination is very useful Mobo breakout from a squeeze with the kahuna, very useful. And then if I have a pocket pivot, great. If I have a viable gap up, great. If I have a big move, that's that's of course an intensity signal, very, very good. Especially when we have two dots or three dots, this is intensity signal. Then we have the momentum signals. The momentum signals are mobo breakout, kahuna, those two are momentum signals, really. Bible gap up is related to gap up. You may say it's a momentum signal. It's a gap up signal or gap down signal. It was designed probably for gap up first, but we have the Bible gap down also. I will say Mobo breakout and Kahuna are momentum signals. Bible gap up is a kind of gap up that is viable. Then we have pocket pivot. Pocket pivot tries to identify volume increase. It's not a price momentum signal, but maybe a price momentum signal also, but when volume is increasing relative to recent past, it does not show the intensity like pressure does. It's just an increase in volume. Pocket pivot, I think created by a different person than who created Kahuna. Then we have PSAR reversal. By the way, on the candle chart, these dots are PSAR levels. We usually don't need the PSAR levels. I don't need it, but some other traders use them. More important, maybe PSAR reversals, or for some traders, both may be important. You may see the PSAR level from these dots on the candle chart in Q2 entry template, and you may see the PSAR reversal from the band indicator. Then we have ice hole. Ice hole was originally designed for a bearish signal, but here it is plotted as bullish bearish both. Bullish means a stock was above 50-day moving average, tried to go down 
but closed higher. That's a bullish opposite of bearish eyes. So let's say this is 50 day moving average. Price was already moving down. Then it tries to raise its head above the 50 day moving average, but falls down. Like tries to go above the ice level of a frozen lake, but falls down again. Scary ice hole failure cannot reach above the ice hole. Death is certain, not so in real life trading, but the naming helps us remember what it means. So ice hole failure was designed for bearish signal that would have come as red dot here. We have the same thing in opposite direction, bullish. If you, if you can imagine opposite of ice hole failure, that's the bullish ice hole. And at the bottom is failed extreme, that is red candle high or green candle low. These are reversal signals, not momentum signals in the activity. This is the alternate Q entry chart template. Let's now look at the at a glance template. That is nothing but weekly, daily combo template together. And if you are also using the alternate signals, we have an at a glance template with three charts, weekly backdrop, daily entry, and daily entry too. Then we have a chart template where the jump and thrust are plotted as histograms in the weekly backdrop and daily entry. So high jump, high thrust, or jump and thrust, thrust, the higher one, and then the jump. And you can see the high jump points here, or thrust points here. Usually I don't use it as I mentioned, unless I want to see how a stock is getting extended over time. Interestingly, if you see the stock chart here, Tesla was going up, but it was going up with so low intensity. So gradual up move that thrust was very low. So it never hit high thrust. But it did reach high jump both in daily, weekly. So that means sometimes a stock may jump to a very high level, but not with very high thrust. So just jump itself when it is high jump in both weekly, daily, alerts us that it is too late to buy the stock. And recently I joined a webinar, I think during the weekend, and some gentlemen were saying that Tesla is a good buy even at this level. In some way, it is a good buy in some way. Why, what way? Because it is a very strong company. It has a strong business model. But in other ways, when you look at jumping at extreme level in both weekly daily, Q traders would not buy it. They would use a pullback. And the pullback has come. Now, if you wanted to buy, you could wait for a proper Q long trade setup. That has not come yet, but it may come. So if you wanted to buy a strong stock and you saw it is at high jump in weekly daily both, you would not rush to buy it because jump thrust are extension levels. And this was extremely extended to the upside. So this is the attic glance template with jump thrust shown as histograms. Let's change the stock, GLD. Use the menu bar to change to, let's see, long term pivot template. In the long term pivot chart, cyan is longer term, right? Yellow is shorter term. We use that coloring. So yellow is quarterly pivot, cyan is yearly pivot. And then upper side, R1, R2, etc., lower side. S1, S2, S3. Sometimes they may overlap. This is the long term pivot level used to see how price is moving around the pivots. 
you may not need them all the time, but no harm looking at the stock because sometimes a watermark reversal may coincide with a reversal at the pivot level. Let's change the instrument. Let's change to UUP, dollar index ETF, and apply the pendulum or price extreme template. This is pendulum chart template for longer time investing. If we wanted to buy an instrument, in this case UUP, we wait for it to go to pendulum extreme low and then see the finer changes in color magenta to red, red to dark red, dark red to yellow and look for buy setup. So this is pendulum coloring and we have the direction lines, volume at the bottom. Most important in this template is the pendulum coloring of the candles. Now the volatility chart. Volatility ban, uncertainty coloring, whether option volatility is high or low, that is uncertainty. The option volatility itself in Q Global, it is shown as a histogram, simulated, simulated for option volatility, therefore simulated for uncertainty. But the volatility band is accurate. It is based on stocks volatility, same in Q Global Q Elite. Then we have the squeeze and squeeze release. Let's look at the volatility chart template using Q Elite because that has more accurate calculation. So we have the same volatility band. The squeeze is same calculation, it is on the volatility band, not as a separate indicator. So squeeze and squeeze release. Here the uncertainty is accurate calculation based on accurate option volatility coming from trade station. Then we have an additional indicator put call ratio and we have an additional indicator, the expected move up and down the weekly expected move recalculated every week after the market close on Friday for the next week. So volatility chart on Q Elite has accurate calculation for the indicators that need option pricing data. Let's go back to Q Global. Let's look at the Okay, stop level, why don't I look at the stop level? Let's look at Tesla, I want to go back to Tesla. I want to apply the protection signal that is stop level and see how it did protect or not protect the position. This is the Q protection signal. It would be hit yesterday and certainly today. Yesterday also it would exit on a closing basis if trailing stop was used using protection signal. And if you waited to see if today price is coming down, again, it will be hit. Trailing stop cannot be lowered. So we'll not lower the trailing stop today. The open was above the protection level, we will not lower the trailing stop. So, but soon after the open, it fell down. So this is the protection signal. The key indicator is the protection level for short and protection level for long. And you can see there are two levels. Mostly they are same, but as you can see in this case, they are somewhat separate from each other. In those cases when they're separate, you may decide based on the stock's move, whether you would use the nearer one or the further one. In this case, looking at the recent volatility at this point, I would use the nearer one. Mostly they are at or around the same level. 
this is the Q protection signal. And why I changed to Tesla is finally to look at it using the fine tune chart template and see if we had a trade setup today. Why today? Because yesterday we had big move down three months at pendulum high. So today we would look to take a short trade. Today's early range high, early range low. Well, for the morning session, don't want to use 10 minutes. Let me change to five minutes. We would be ready to take a short trade in Tesla using intraday time frame. Then early range high, early range low form. Price could not go up after the open. On this candle, five minute interval, fine tune chart, we'll use five minute in the morning session. It closed below early range low, but it had a lower tail. So we'll probably put a stop short entry just below the low of that candle. So we would take the short trade at this point. Our stop would be just above early range high that was never approached and stock fell sharply. So easily we could book partial profit and then we could either apply trailing stop or just hold on to the stock to see how it goes till the close of the day. So once again, just like in Netflix, in Tesla also, we had an easy, easy meanings, low risk and highly profitable and high probability short trade using fine tune charts the day after the biggest down move of three months at pendulum high. Always a good point to look for shorts. Biggest down move of three months at pendulum high. And if we have biggest up move of three months at pendulum low, always a good point to look for longs. I think I have covered all the chart templates. Backdrop, entry, alternate entry. Long-term pivot, pendulum, volatility, stop, jump and thrust at a glance, and fine tune. Okay, then short-term pivot, the last template. Usually I don't use it as I mentioned, only useful I think for regular day traders. They may watch the instrument, not only using fine tune, but also short-term pivot intraday. It has, some of the fine tune levels and also the S1, S2, S3. It has previous days close as pivot and then S1, S2, S3 at the bottom, at the lower end and R1, R2, R3 at the upper end. Similar to long term pivots, but for intraday time frame, these are weekly pivots. I would use it only if I'm day trading on a regular basis to see how price is moving around or piercing through the intraday pivot levels. Those are all the indicators and chart templates. We'll end today's session here. Thanks a lot once again for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great day and as always, trade profitably. Thank you.